Hey, this is Mr. Mason N, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to practice solving equations with multiple steps. And we have six examples in this tutorial, so let's get started with this one right here. Now, you could solve this one mentally, but I want to make sure that you know what the steps are, so if you get a more complex problem, you know how to apply those steps. But first, let's solve this mentally. Now, what I see when I look at this equation is this. I am going to ignore what's here for the numerator of this fraction and just put a 4 at the bottom and put an equal sign and then write R1 right here. And then when I look at this, I know the only thing that I could put here to make this a true statement is the number 4 because 4 over 4 is one whole or 4 divided by 4. So whatever X is right here must be added to negative 4 to make positive 4. And the only thing that could fit right here is 8. I could just switch these two integers around and read this as 8 minus 4, which is 4, and then 4 over 4 is 1. So I know this x must be positive 8. However, we have to get used to showing the algebraic steps. So here's what we're going to do. If you ever have one side of your equation, which is nothing but one big fraction, what you do is you multiply the entire fraction by whatever the denominator is, which is a 4 and we write that as a numerator. Now really this is just 4 over 1, but we don't have to write the 1 on the bottom. We just write a 4 at the top with the understanding that when you multiply two fractions, the same numerator and denominator will cancel each other out. And we have to balance our equation by multiplying this side by 4 as well. So on the right hand side we have 1 times 4, which is 4, and on the left hand side we have negative 4 plus x. Now to isolate our x, what we have to do is take this negative 4 and do the inverse, which is to add 4 to it. And we balance our equation by adding 4 to the other side as well. And on the right hand side we have 4 plus 4, which is 8. And on the left side, these opposite integers cancel each other out to be 0. And all we have remaining is a positive 1x, or just an x. And that is our answer. x is equal to 8. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, now in this problem right here, we have an equation that can be simplified a bit before we go ahead and solve. Now, whenever you see a number right on the outside of parentheses with no sign in the middle of that number in parentheses, like a plus or a minus, we know we are dealing with multiplication. We are multiplying negative 12 by everything inside the parentheses. So we have to distribute the negative 12 to the x and the negative 12 to the positive 4. Negative 12 times positive x is negative 12x. Negative 12 times positive 4 is negative 48. So we just write minus 48. And then we go ahead and write the remainder of our equation, which is plus. 3x equals 6. Now we can simplify this equation a bit further by taking this term and this term and combining them because they are like terms. We have a negative 12x and a positive 3x, which when combined is negative 9x. Now this negative 48 is not being multiplied by a variable. Therefore, this is called a constant. And you can only combine constants with other constants. So let's just drop this minus 48 straight down and set it equal to 6. Now on the left hand side of our equation we have two terms. We have a constant and then we have a coefficient being multiplied by a variable. And when you have that situation you have to deal with your constants first. So let's do the inverse of minus 48 which is to add 48. And we balance our equation by doing the same thing on the other side. And when you add 6 and 48, that gives us a total of 54. And on the left hand side, after canceling out these opposite integers, we still have negative 9x. Now the only thing x can be at this point would be negative 6, because a negative times a negative would make a positive, and the only thing you can multiply negative 9 by to make positive 54 would be negative 6. So although I know this mentally, I'm going to go ahead and show my work. 
Now the negative nine in the X are being multiplied and the inverse of multiplication is division. So we're gonna go ahead and divide both sides by that coefficient, which is negative nine. So whenever you have a coefficient multiplied by a variable, you must divide both sides by that coefficient, which in this case is negative nine. Now negative nine divided by negative nine is positive one, which gives us positive one X or just X, which is our goal. And on the right hand side, we have positive 54 divided by negative nine, which is negative six. All right, let's go ahead and solve another problem. All right, now remember when we have two terms, one that is a constant, like this negative nine, and one that has a coefficient and a variable, you must take care of the constant first. So let's do the inverse of negative nine, which is positive nine, and we are gonna add nine on the other side as well. So over here we have positive 40, and over here after canceling out these opposite integers, we have positive four X, and we can just write four X. Now to get rid of this coefficient, we divide it by itself to turn it into positive one. Remember, anything divided by itself is positive one, and our goal is to get positive one X. So let's go ahead and divide four by itself, which is one, and then let's divide 40 by four to balance our equation as well, and that gives us positive one X is equal to 10. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, now in this example, notice we have a single negative on the outside of parentheses. And whenever you encounter this, you should keep in mind that this negative really just means negative one. And what you have to do is distribute this negative one to every term inside the parentheses. So basically what we're doing is we are multiplying each one of these three terms by negative one. Now, whenever you multiply anything by negative one, the result is going to be the opposite of what that number is. So what I like to do when I see a single negative on the outside of parentheses is just write each term inside the parentheses as its complete opposite. So the way I read it is the opposite of positive 5x is negative 5x. The opposite of plus 2 is minus 2. And the opposite of minus 9x would be plus 9x. And then we can set this equal to 2 in this case. All right, now we can go ahead and simplify this equation a bit further. So we're going to combine negative 5x to positive 9x, which is positive 4x, or just 4x. So let me go ahead and just write 4x. And then we're going to subtract 2. We have no other constants to combine with that minus two, so we just set this equal to positive two. All right, the next thing we have to do is move our constant by doing the inverse. So instead of minus two, we're gonna add two to both sides. And on the right-hand side, that gives us four, and on the left-hand side, we are left with four times x. And at this point, we should see that x is equal to positive one because the only thing you can multiply four by to make four would be positive one but let's just go ahead and divide both sides by our coefficient of four. So when we do this, we come up with X is equal to positive one because four divided by four is equal to one. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, now notice in this equation, we have a fraction and then we have a constant. And when we did the first problem in this tutorial, we had one huge fraction on the left-hand side of our equation. But notice this minus eight is not part of this fraction. So when you get an equation like this, what you have to do is start with this constant first. So let's go ahead and do the inverse of subtracting eight, which is to add eight to both sides. So on the right-hand side, we have negative nine and positive eight, which is negative one. And on the left-hand side, these opposite integers cancel themselves out to be zero leaving us with x divided by four. So let's go ahead and write that. Now, when all you have remaining is a fraction on the left-hand side, you can go ahead and multiply that entire fraction by its denominator. So let's go ahead and write a four for a numerator 
So we can cancel out the same numerator and denominator. And keep in mind, this four really is a four over one. So we're gonna cancel out these fours, which really is a one, it is not zero. Whenever you multiply fractions that have the same numerator and denominator, they cancel out to be exactly one because really it's four over four, which is one over one. So on the left-hand side, we just have an X here. And on the right-hand side, we still have to multiply this by four to balance our equation. And negative one times positive four is negative four. And we could go ahead and check our answer by substituting this X here with negative four and then dividing it by positive four, which is negative one. And negative one minus eight is in fact negative nine. All right, let's go ahead and do just one more example. All right, the first thing that we wanna do here is shorten this equation up a bit by using the distributive property. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply three by x and three by negative three, which gives us 3x minus nine. And then we're gonna multiply positive four by x, which is positive four x, and then multiply positive four by positive five, which is positive 20. And then set that equal to negative three. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and combine our x terms. We have a positive three x and a positive four x, which is positive seven x. And then we're gonna combine our constants. We have a negative nine and a positive 20, which results in positive 11. And we're gonna set that equal to negative three. Next, we have to deal with our constant first. So we're gonna do the inverse of adding 11, which is to subtract 11 from both sides. So on the right-hand side, we have negative three and negative 11, which results in negative 14. And on the left-hand side, after canceling out these opposite integers, we have seven times x, or seven x. And the last step is to divide both sides by whatever the coefficient is, which in this case is positive seven. So seven divided by itself, of course, is positive one. So our coefficient is positive one, but we don't have to write that coefficient whenever it's positive one. We just write an x. And on the right-hand side, we have a negative divided by positive, which is a negative, and in this case, that would be negative two. Hey, I just wanna say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.